Welcome to the Public Health Action Curriculum for Teens, or FACT. FACT is a free, video-based public health curriculum designed for teens to learn about the public health issues that impact communities across New Mexico. FACT was created by the University of New Mexico Center for Disaster Medicine and the Albuquerque University of New Mexico Medical Reserve Corps Unit. For general information and for updates, please feel free to visit our website at unmcdm.org. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash public health action curriculum for teens. Welcome to Module 3, Emotional and Mental Well-Being. Module 3 consists of four videos, Mental Health and Wellness, How Can I Recognize Depression and Help Prevent Suicide, How Can I Recognize Teen Dating Violence, and recognizing serious mental illness. By the end of module three, you should understand the connection between a healthy mind and a healthy body, know the difference between healthy and unhealthy coping skills, and give examples of each, and know how to recognize the warning signs of depression, suicide, and teen dating violence, and what to do when you see them. Being healthy is more than not having a disease or illness. Being healthy is about health of the mind and body. It is about our overall well-being. Being in good mental health is just as important as our physical health. Being in good mental health is when a person realizes his or his own abilities, is able to cope with the normal stresses of life, and is able to function well at home, in school, at work, and in their community. Mental well-being can be described in three ways, emotional, psychological, and social well-being. Emotional well-being includes happiness, peacefulness, and life satisfaction. Psychological well-being is having self-acceptance, spirituality, control of one's environment, and positive relationships. And lastly, social well-being is having a sense of community, belonging, social acceptance, and personal self-worth. Mental wellness tells us that we perceive our lives as going well even through everyday ups and downs. Mental well-being is something that we can all strive for. By learning how to deal with stress and emotions, we can work toward achieving good mental health and preventing unhealthy or harmful behaviors. Mental well-being requires effort just as physical wellness does. Developing Good coping skills can help us deal with emotional and physical stressors. Coping skills are like tools in a toolbox that help us maintain mental wellness. There are good coping skills and bad ones. Next, we will discuss good coping skills. An increase in physical activity is beneficial to the mind just as it is to the body. Something as simple as 10 minute walk can help clear the mind while burning calories. Listen to music or talk with a friend while walking or exercising can make it more enjoyable. Dancing, running, and other activities will work too, as long as it's enjoyable. Take time for yourself. Taking time for yourself away from others is a way to relax and clear your mind from the stress of life. This could include reading a book, going for a walk, composing music, drawing, or writing down your thoughts in a journal. Nutrition. You may not think there is a link between the food you put in your body and the way you feel, but there certainly is. Eating healthier foods will give you more energy and help you feel better by giving your body the nutrition it needs to function. Eat the rainbow of fruits and vegetables, if you can, along with lean meats and healthy greens. Limit your sugary treats, but don't feel guilty about allowing yourself to splurge every now and then. Guilt can make it harder to improve healthy eating and can make you feel worse about yourself. Remember, it is about eating an overall healthy, balanced diet. Wellness activities. You may find it helpful to participate in wellness activities such as yoga, meditation, deep breathing, or other relaxation techniques. If there are no classes available, rent a book from the library or look online. There are many free resources available out there. <laughs> Laugh. Laughter is a great stress reliever. 
Watch a funny movie or read a funny book to give your mind a break from your daily mental work. Volunteer. Volunteering to help others is a great way to improve your own mental wellness. Volunteering can reduce your stress, help you understand how other people struggle and succeed. Increase your gratitude about your own life and get you involved in your community. Look for organized volunteer opportunities at school or at church, or ask an adult to help you find a way to help others. Sleep more and sleep better. By getting good restful sleep, you will have the energy to take on a new day. Some tips for getting a restful night's sleep include setting a sleep schedule for yourself and sticking to it, stopping electronic activities like TV, texting, and games an hour or so before bed, doing some more physical activity during the day to sleep better at night, and staying away from caffeine and sugary foods before bed. Spend time with friends and family in a personal way, not just on the phone or computer. Take time to reconnect with people, to laugh, tell stories, offer help, cry and hug, or just to catch up on life. Going for a walk, playing basketball, or cooking a meal together are some good connecting activities. Spend time with people who make you feel good and healthy. And lastly, challenge yourself and set goals. Set a physical activity goal for yourself. Join a group like an after school club or soccer team. Completing goals helps build confidence and improves mental well-being. Just as there are positive healthy coping skills, there are unhealthy ways that people cope with emotional stress too. These include misusing drugs and alcohol, committing violence, hurting themselves, excessive exercising or dangerous eating behaviors, and taking unnecessary physical risks. It is important to recognize that these behaviors can cause even more problems to both physical and mental health and should not replace more positive, healthier coping techniques. And remember, healthy coping skills take practice. The more you use them, the easier it will become. Mental well-being is something that we all must work on throughout our lives. It is normal to have occasional feelings of sadness and anger, but if you notice these uncomfortable feelings aren't going away, it's okay to ask for help from someone who cares about you. Talk to a teacher or a counselor at school. Ask your coach for advice. Discuss your feelings with your parents or older siblings. Reaching out for help when you need it is the most important skill of all. Sometimes feelings of sadness are caused by something more serious than just occasional trouble coping with everyday stresses. Having severe sadness that lasts for a long time could be a sign that someone is suffering from depression. Depression includes severe sad moods, decreased interest in activities, serious weight gain or weight loss, constant tiredness, overwhelming feelings of guilt, difficulty concentrating, withdrawal from the outside world, and most seriously, repeated thoughts of death. Depression affects one in every four adult Americans. Each year, more than 36,000 Americans take their own lives and hundreds of thousands receive treatment for self-inflicted wounds and injuries. Depression is a public health concern because, if left untreated, it can become a chronic disease. Depression can also make other existing chronic diseases worse. Depression is costly and debilitating to those who suffer from it. The first thing to know about depression is that it is a, it's a chemical imbalance in your brain. And sometimes when we see that among our loved ones or our friends, we think, oh, what's wrong with them? You know, why can't they just pull themselves up and get motivated? So um, I want to acknowledge that, that, that there's a lot that goes on that causes depression, and part of it is chemical. There are signs that an individual may be depressed, including feelings of hopelessness or pessimism, feelings of guilt, worthlessness or helplessness, irritability or restlessness, loss of interest in activities or hobbies, fatigue and decreased energy, difficulty concentrating, remembering details and making decisions, insomnia, early morning wakefulness or excessive sleeping, overeating or loss of appetite, persistent aches or pains, headaches, cramps or digestive problems that do not get better even with treatment, 
or thoughts of suicide or suicide attempts. Depression is a burden to the individual with the disease and to their relationships with family, friends, work, and their community. But depression can be treated. Individuals suffering from depression can be treated with medication prescribed by a doctor or by using behavioral therapy or both. There is no shame in depression. It takes a lot of courage for someone to express their feelings and this may be the first step to their seeking help. Sometimes an individual suffering from depression will attempt to end their life through suicide or will commit acts of violence toward others. Sometimes there are warning signs about these problems that can be seen by others. These warning signs should be acknowledged and taken seriously and include talking about wanting to die or commit suicide, looking for a way to commit suicide, such as searching for information online or buying a gun, talking about feeling hopeless or having no reason to live, talking about feeling trapped or being in unbearable pain, talking about being a burden to others, increasing the use of alcohol or drugs, acting anxious or agitated or behaving recklessly, sleeping too much or too little, withdrawal, showing rage or talking about seeking revenge, displaying extreme mood swings, preoccupation with death or violence, loss of interest in things that used to be important, giving away prized possessions for no reason, visiting or calling people to say goodbye. If someone you know shows these warning signs, talk to an adult about it. Depression and suicidal thoughts should be handled by a qualified professional. How do you act as a motivator for somebody impacted by depression? How do you get them up, moving, exercising, making good decisions so that they can improve their mood? Um, I think first having compassion that they're going through something really serious that, you know, their brain's being hijacked by, chemi you know, by natural chemicals that's causing them to be sad. So their brain's been hijacked, right? So that's not really their fault. Um, so having that compassion, I think, really goes a long way because people begin to trust you because they know that you care. If possible, encourage the person who is showing these signs to call the toll-free 24-hour hotline of the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. If someone you know actually harms themselves physically or with drugs or could harm someone else, call 911. Another essential part of mental well-being is having healthy relationships. Recognizing the difference between healthy and unhealthy relationships can help prevent both physical and mental trauma. Um, team eating violence is a set of behaviors around power and control where one person who um, is in a dating relationship you know, makes someone feel badly about themselves, um, controls who they talk to, uh, might monitor their, you know, their phones, their cell phones, check their text messages, get on their Facebook or, you know, their Twitter accounts or anything, social media, and, and see what they're up to. So this, the other person is feeling controlled, and that's really what dating violence is. It's a set of unhealthy behaviors that can actually really lead to some serious stuff. Some relationships that are not emotionally healthy can turn abusive or violent. Teen dating violence includes physical, sexual, or psychological harm by a current or former dating or relationship partner. Abuse or violence can be committed by males or females and can occur in all types of relationships. Teens and their parents are often unaware that teens can experience dating violence, but unhealthy relationships can happen at any age. Teen dating violence can happen once or can continue over a long period of time. Dating and relationship violence and abuse comes in many forms and sometimes is hidden from others. Examples of violence or abuse in a relationship include Physical abuse such as kicking, slapping, shoving, punching, biting, burning, or other harmful physical acts. Forcing a partner to engage in a sexual act through threats, physical force, drugs and alcohol, or other abusive methods using words, gestures, and weapons to threaten to cause injury, death, or other physical harm, psychological or emotional violence, such as shaming, bullying, stalking, controlling, or harassing. This can be done in person or electronically through text messages and social media. Unfortunately, some teens think that committing or accepting these abusive behaviors are a normal part of relationships. Some teens grow up in homes with emotionally, physically, or verbally abusive parents or family members. This behavior is also seen on the news and in television and movies, making it seem acceptable. Some teens may misinterpret violence and anger as an expression of intense love or affection, no matter what the reason is. Violence and abuse are not acceptable behaviors in any relationship. 
Teen dating relationships and all relationships should be nonviolent, equal, respectful, trusting, and comfortable. There should also be open communication about feelings. Teens who are the victims of unhealthy, violent dating relationships can suffer from negative health effects throughout their lives. Victims are more likely to do poorly in school, suffer from depression and anxiety, abuse drugs and alcohol, exhibit antisocial behaviors, become suicidal, and be victimized during college or adulthood. The most effective tools in preventing teen dating violence are the support of friends and the actions of those outside the relationship. You may know someone who is in an unhealthy, dangerous relationship whose partner does things like controls their activities, their outfits, and who they talk to, criticizes their appearance, and says things to make them feel bad, pushes unwanted sexual activities, physically threatens them like raising a hand as if they are going to hit, isolates them by saying they should quit activities and stop hanging out with their friends, causes actual physical or sexual harm. It is important to realize that even if your friend does not complain about the relationship, the behavior is still not okay. Here are some things you can do to help. Tell your friend you care about them and they don't deserve to be hurt. Discourage your friend from fighting back or seeking revenge, which can make the situation worse. Talk to a trusted adult about the situation. The most important thing to remember is that getting help for a victim of dating abuse and violence is important, but you should never get physically involved. Confront the abuser or use violence to protect your friend. Millions of Americans have mental illnesses and disorders that affect their lives and lives of their family and friends. Mental illnesses are diseases that can often be diagnosed and treated just like cancer or the flu. Unfortunately, untreated mental illnesses sometimes lead to hospitalizations, violence, drugs and alcohol addictions, homelessness and suicide. Some people will live with these conditions for years and maybe their whole lives without getting the care and treatment they need. Mental illness is considered a chronic condition and worsens other chronic conditions such as heart disease and diabetes. Mental illness may affect school, work, friendships, community, and home lives. Mental illness can be treated by working with mental health professionals and using prescription medication. There should be no stigma or shame associated with having a mental illness. Mental illness is a serious condition, but with proper treatment can be managed and most people can live normal, healthy lives as long as they continue to manage their illness properly. Only a qualified health care provider can diagnose mental illness, but everyone should understand what mental illness is. There are lots of different mental illnesses, but some are more common. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness. About 1 in 10 people have one. There are different types of anxiety disorders like obsessive compulsive disorder, social anxiety disorder, phobias, and post-traumatic stress syndrome. Some people can get anxiety or panic attacks. The symptoms of a panic or anxiety attack can include sweating, headache, nausea, tunnel vision, and a racing heart. Bipolar disorder causes extreme mood swings that are out of proportion to the things that are going on in life. Bipolar disorder is not the same as being occasionally moody or energetic. Doctors call the moods either highs or lows, and they can be dangerous if not treated. The highs can make someone feel really active or energetic, but also irritable, agitated, and dangerously impulsive. This means they might do something without really thinking it through, or they might have poor judgment. The high mood is usually followed by a crash or low depressed mood, which can result in isolation and self-harm. Schizophrenia is a serious mental illness that causes a person to hear, see, smell, or feel things that other people don't. These experiences can be very real and scary for someone with schizophrenia. So it is important to never judge someone else if they are reacting to something we can't see. Some people with schizophrenia might withdraw from interacting with other people and feel like they are in constant danger. Some people think that those with mental illnesses are prone to violence. Only a small percentage of people with mental illnesses will have violent outbursts. And most of the time that outburst is directed at themselves. 
most people with mental illnesses are actually more likely to become a victim of violence themselves, which is why recognition and treatment is so important. Sometimes we gotta come prepared with some, some tools that they can use, right? So you're springing this information on them. You're saying, I know, you know something's going on with you, but hey, at the same time, here's, a, here's an adult you could go talk to, or hey, here's a place that I know about that I heard good things about that's a counseling place. Maybe you know, we can go check it out and you can go talk to somebody. So sometimes it's that active step of getting them connected. Helping all people achieve mental wellness is one of the most important goals of public health. When people are in a state of good mental well-being, they are generally happier, healthier, and more productive. Congratulations on completing Module 3. The action step for Module 3 is to create a personal inventory of your healthy and unhealthy coping skills. Take some quiet, personal time to yourself to think this one through. Think about some of the coping skills we discussed in the module. Are you engaging in the healthy coping skills, the unhealthy coping skills, or a mixture of both? Write them down in the list, then take a look at your list and create a goal for yourself that will help you improve your mental well-being. Write down what you can do to achieve that goal. Write down anything you think may get in the way of achieving that goal. Then start working on your goal. Keep track of your progress as the days, weeks, and months go on.